Hey, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to the sisterhood. Thanks. I'm happy to be here with y'all. Me too. Okay. So just even there, we heard a little bit of a <laughs> distinction in accents. So Kristen, why don't you introduce yourself first and say where you are and a little bit about you. And then Greta will go to you so everybody can get a feel for who's who. Yeah, sure. So I'm Kristen Hatton. I'm in Oklahoma and I'm the mom of a young adult now, which is crazy. My oldest just graduated college. I've got one headed to college and I've got a high schooler as well. My husband is a pastor and I am an author and I am also a student. I am getting a graduate degree in counseling right now. I love it. So great. We love having you, Kristen. You've been on before and it's just always such a joy. Greta, go ahead. Hi guys, I'm Greta Eskridge and I'm from California and I am a mom to four. We're just entering the teen years. I have a 16 year old, 14 year old, 12 year old and a nine year old who thinks he's a teenager. <laughs> um, and uh, my husband and I have been married for 22 years. We um, are both in um, artists. He's a visual artist. I'm a writer and a speaker. And I'm excited to be on your show today and just to talk about parenting in the midst of summer looking a little different with our kids. Yeah, so let's start there. Let's start with teenagers, because we are really speaking about kids today, ages 12 to 20. That's kind of the window we're tackling today. And let's start with purpose. What is important for, ki for us to know as moms and also for um, as we're thinking about summer with our kids, how does purpose play a role? Greta, why don't you start? Well, I, I love this question because I think that it's important for us to recognize that every kid wants to have a purpose and um, needs to have purpose and to feel valued and not directionless. And that grows all the more important the older they get. And so I was thinking about how easy it is for our kids to sort of get lost in, um, you know, playing video games or scrolling through TikTok. And they, while that fills time and, and it can even feel good for a while, they recognize after a time that it does feel purposeless. And so I know for me to, to say to my kids, you know, put down the screens and, and that's the end of the conversation, that's not really helpful. But instead, if I come alongside them and say, I totally understand where you're coming from, because right now I feel like um, a little bit lost and I feel the temptation and the tendency to want to, um, to do something that fills me up momentarily, but it doesn't have a lot of purpose. That helps them know that I'm, I'm not saying you're the only one. I'm saying I get you and let's work on this together because we're in it together. We're all experiencing the same thing. And so to, to take that idea um, that they're not in it alone and to help them find purposeful activities together with us is just a great place for them to start. Mm -hmm. It's really good. Kristen, what do you think? Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think you hit on an important thing that we're in this together with our kids and identifying with them in that, that we, I mean, there's a lot of confusion and unknowns. And so dealing honestly with our emotions, I think is really important. Um, and I think being proactive and giving them some structure, but also keeping in mind that it is summer. And so I don't want to be a drill sergeant and giving them so much to do that it's not restful. I mean, I like to go with like the, the seasons. Um, and so it is a time of rest. And so how can we balance being um, different than the school year when we have so much activities? Um, and then I also think that this summer we have a really awesome opportunity to shepherd our kids well in just the season of life. Like life is hard and it is enduring things that are difficult. And so, I mean, when I think about this summer, this year, 2020, like I hope that my kids will look back on it 
and be, instead of thinking, oh, that was such a bummer. We didn't get to go to camp and we didn't get to do all the things that we normally do. Like, I hope that they'll look back and they'll think about the memories we made as a family. They'll think about what they learned that endurance built character. And so I'm really looking forward to just kind of flipping the switch. And instead of being negative about, you know, what we can't do, thinking about the opportunity that we have to really build into their hearts. Yeah, it's really good. Alex, what's your perspective on summer and purpose for our teenagers? Well, I'll just repeat a little bit of what Kristen said about taking the opportunity that's there to switch things. I'm thinking about my older two girls. They both went into this summer as we were approaching early spring before everything hit with an idea of what summer was going to look like and with a purpose behind it. One really wanted to get work experience and earn some money. And one really wanted to do some things that would maybe bolster her college application. And we had some ideas around what that might look like. And we soon realized as things were starting to get canceled that probably their purposes were going to shift and change. And some of the most helpful things I've read about teenagers right now has been about this purpose shift and helping them see opportunities where we could see barriers. Mm -hmm. And we talk about this a lot on the sisterhood about creativity, that barriers as the margins get slimmer, it actually is opportunity for creativity. And so how do we help our kids now at the beginning of this summer realign their purpose? And we've done that a little bit with um, our oldest daughter, and now we're working on the next one, on how do we kind of realign that purpose on what it's going to look like. And then that starts to help figure out the day-to-day -day routines and what our days will look like. But if we kind of name that bigger purpose, then the smaller segments of time are going to become a little more evident. And um, I'll link in the show notes to an article in the Washington Post that I thought was especially helpful around teens and jobs jobs are hard for teenagers to come by where I live because so many adults are unemployed, that those jobs that would have been taken part-time summer jobs by teenagers, people who need to support families are taking them and they, as they should. And so um, this article was really great about following a couple of teenagers and how their summer job plans have changed and the opportunities to be creative and to either follow a passion, to study something new, or to spend time with an older relative or somebody who needs some caretaking right now. Maybe it's a sibling, maybe it's an uncle or a grandparent in a new and different and really meaningful way I thought was really inspirational. So I'll link to that article in the show notes. Yeah, I love that piece just about thinking creatively just how can we do things differently? And it still can follow under the umbrella of purpose. Mm -hmm. And I always go back to Viktor Frankl's book, Man's Search for Meaning. And Viktor Frankl was um, in a Nazi concentration camp. And he said, the ones who survived mm -hmm. were the ones who had purpose and had something to look forward to. And so it's in one of his whole missions was helping people to name that purpose. Like what is, what is the purpose they were going to be going home to? And I think that's part of our job as moms, we can really help kids to name a purpose for the summer and really think through that. Okay. Well, what else about parenting? Like as we approach summer with our teenagers, what are some other things we should be thinking about as far as parenting goes? Kristen, why don't you start us on this one? Sure. I mean, as I mentioned before, just kind of having this balance between being purposeful and still giving restful time. So I think it's helpful maybe right here at the beginning of the summer to sit down together as a family and talk about like, what are our expectations? What do we hope to get out of it? Let's, let's not, because it's so easy just to, the time goes by if we don't think proactively about it. So, I mean, for one of my sons, I think it would be awesome if he spent some time preparing for the ACT, SAT. I mean, that's something that normally he wouldn't do. Um, or maybe it's, you know, to read X number of books or to, in fact, one of my sons just stripped a piece of furniture and he, talk about purpose, like he got up and he was so excited and like just to see the pride that he took in actually doing it. I mean, he had to 
YouTube video, how to do it. And so just thinking about like, what are those projects that we, by the end of the summer, what would we like to have done? And so then let's think about, you know, how much do we need to work on it each day or each week so that that allows for like purpose in each day, but then still gives time. Like if you want to sleep in or you want to do whatever it is, you know, without me nagging, like you need to do this or that, um, they know they can kind of have that independence autonomy to make that decision. Like, okay, as long as I get this done by the end of the summer. Mm -hmm. Really good. Greta, what are some things we should be thinking about? Um, well, Again, I, I love the idea of putting ourselves in our kids' shoes and, and relating to where they're at. And I know for me, having things to look forward to um, is a huge part of, um, of, of my inspiration and joy and helping me get even th get through harder times. So, you know, when our summer plans were canceled for the family, for each individual kid, there was this sense of loss for sure. But then there was also a sense of like, well, we've been looking forward to these things all year. Where do we go from here? And so we just started thinking of some special things that we could do to replace what was lost. Um, and, and it wouldn't take the place of those things, but it would give us some other new things to look forward to. And going back to what we were just talking about, this idea of saying, well, we, we experience loss, but how can we turn it into a positive? What new things can we do that we didn't have time to in our busy summer? And now we can say, well, suddenly we have time to go on um, a trip to a national park that's just opening up that we didn't have time to do before. Or um, suddenly we have time to do a house project that we've been putting off for a long time and it will be um, a benefit to the kids and they can join in with us. And, and so we started to look for positives and make some plans. So we had things to look forward to and that energized us. And um, I think that that's a really helpful thing for our kids to have something to hold on to when it feels like a lot of their um, their things have been stripped away. Mm -hmm. That's really good, and and it gets into. I want us to start talking about just how we can make memories in the daily moments, and I think about how. You know, we often, when we when we say that, we think, well, kind of the fun moments, but actually, work is just as important as the fun, right? Because especially with our older kids, like we really want them to be honing work ethic and thinking about what that can look like in our homes. And, and a lot of people are doing home projects because they're home and they're investing in their, in their home instead of taking that vacation. That money is now going into building a garden or replacing their living room furniture or whatever. Um, but I was thinking about, you know, our teenagers, they are big and they are skilled and they can be skilled if they are taught. And so it's really taking that opportunity as well to really teach them some, some work ethic and some skills that will help them forever. So let's transition there. And Alex, I'm gonna have you start us with this one. What are some, some things we can do to make everyday memories with our teenagers this summer? Yeah, you mentioned uh, home projects and we do have a whole list of home projects <laughs> that we are uh, willing to pay for, which a lot of times being in a big family, we say, we're not going to pay you for that. That's just the cost of living in a family. Uh, but for some of these house projects, um, and because we do have some budget for it right now, we are willing to pay them and they're motivated because they are bored and they want to do something and they want to earn money and that has been a loss for them as they look at the summer. Uh, one thing that I have really loved during the whole COVID time that I anticipate is going to continue into the summer is just that my kids are spending more time together with mm -hmm. each other. Yeah. And so how can we create some times that feel more like summer hangout instead of COVID spring hangout, quarantine <laughs> hangout? Like how do we distinguish between the two? So my husband just fixed uh, the fire pit in our backyard. We have a, a gas fire because we're not supposed to have an open real fire in the city. 
Um, but it had not been working. And so he just fixed it two nights ago. So already I have caught kids out there together. So setting those places, I mean, place matters. And when we're stuck at home, we're really focusing in on how do we create those spaces for our kids to be together. And then Kristen and I, um, a couple of weeks ago, had a whole Instagram messaging conversation around uh, shows that we're watching with our teenagers right now. And that can be something that you have together. And as a family, we've had some hard times figuring out how to have a show with a nine-year-old and an almost 18-year-old and adults who want to be entertained at the same time. Uh -huh. But um, I will give a shout out to two that we have found since Krista and I talked about this months ago when the quarantine started and I said, we don't have any. Um, the Amazing Race, there's like a hundred seasons of it. So that yes. could, I mean, you could go until 2022 watching that. Um, and then uh, the older girls and I watched Waco, which Kristen, I know, watched with her kids. And it was a great conversation starter and felt uh, very appropriate to watch with my teenagers. So there are some things that can either spur conversation or can just be sibling bonding time that, you know, is screen time, but it is memories. And I want my kids to remember this time of being together and they'll remember the squabbles, but they're more likely 20 years from now to remember the time around the fire pit. Totally. I love that. Kristen, jump in on this since you were a yeah. part of that whole conversation. Yes. I'd love to jump in. And I love that conversation that Alex and I were having because um, that is something that our family has always valued is um, watching shows together. And then my husband, I can't tell you how often he hits pause so that we can talk about, you know, looking at it from a gospel perspective or seeing like, where's, where's the brokenness and where does the truth of the gospel need to come in? And so even shows that sometimes others might think, Ooh, you watch that. Um, I think there's value in that because one, when they're in my home, I want them to be exposed in a way that we can talk about so that we can mm -hmm. help shape their thinking about it. Um, so a show, I mean, Waco was awesome and we particularly like that because we used to live in Waco, but, um, all American was another series that it is, um, kind of football, which I have two teen boys. So that's, you know, they're all about that, but it deals with racism and classism. And so we had so many good conversations mm. surrounding that. Um, but also what Alex is saying, just sibling time together. I've absolutely loved that my boys, I mean, not being able to be with their friends, they have taken up fishing and they go fishing together almost every day. Mm -hmm. And they, are good buddies anyway, but they still kind of live their own lives with their own peers. And so just seeing them have that time together before my older one goes off to college has just been awesome. But I also think as parents, and especially for us here in a state where things are opening up more, like it's important that we think about what we want to hang on to because social distancing is whether it's already loosened or it's going to loosen in the future. I mean, it's not always going to be this way. So I think it's important that we think about what do we want to hold on to, like what has been good. And I think we would agree like this extra family time, sibling time has been such a silver lining blessing in this. And so going forward, as we start to add activities and other people back into the mix, like I don't want to lose hold of what's good. And I think that's what takes proactive parenting to say, okay, we're going to still say that Tuesday night and Friday night or whatever it is that we just talk about, or maybe it's something every Sunday, we kind of look at our schedules and see what we're available for. But I just think it's important that the parents put forth a plan. So like Alex was talking about having that fire pit, like we need to set something up and they'll be there. But if, if we're just checked out and not setting a plan, then it's super easy for them to just go get on their video games or for my boys, they can, they can do a little more socializing now. Um, so I want to be sure that we're still saying, you know what, we still want to have a game night because that's something that was really fun. Um, while we were social distancing theme nights, we had the most fun theme night. So I would love to do another one of those. And Krista, I know you had an awesome, um, what, what was it? It was murder uh, mystery, yeah, murder mystery night. I would love to do that. Yeah. 
I was just thinking as you were talking, Kristen, how funny is that in the future if we're like, okay, Wednesday night's quarantine night, like that we actually like <laughs> coin that a term now, right? Like we go back to quarantine and how it was so funny, so different. Yeah. Greta, I want you to jump in on this. What are some ideas you have? Well, I think one of the um, simplest ways to connect with our kids, even our teens, is to actually pick a family read aloud. And um, I know a lot of people think like, oh, my, my teenagers, they don't want to be read aloud to. But you'd be really surprised at how relaxing it is for them to, um, to just be able to sit and absorb um, the words coming from you or or from their dad, or if neither one of you parents are really great at reading aloud, audible books um, or audio books, we use audible, so that's why that came to mind, but audio books are great too. And just, just to have that time where you're all immersed in the same story, it's kind of in a way, it's a way to take a journey together, to share experiences that take you somewhere else, but you're still at home. And, and I think there are ways to make it feel special. So it's not like, oh, mom wants to read aloud to us again. But, you know, like, like Kristen said, make it happen around the fire pit or make homemade popcorn and um, have hot chocolate, whatever it is, but to, to make it a night or twice a week, whatever, where you gather together and you read a book and um, you make it something that people look forward to. And I think you can even extend it. So afterwards, you, you're like, well, um, man, that book had a lot of great food in it. Let's make some of the food and, and have a meal at the end that we share and talk about our favorite parts of the book. And when it's just something fun and it's celebratory like that, it doesn't have to feel like school. It just feels like um, you have taken something and you've made it a little more meaningful because you've elevated it from the ordinary. And um, it's just a great way that's really simple to connect with one another. Okay. Two questions. The first one is what are some books you've loved that you've done that with, with older kids? And then secondly, we need to know how you make homemade popcorn. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to answer the homemade popcorn one first. I've literally been making homemade popcorn since I was like 10. Um, and when I got married, my mom gave me the popcorn pot as a wedding oh, gift. Oh, <laughs> super cute. So oh, um, yeah, you just use, you got to use a oil that, that has a high smoking point. So I like avocado oil best, but you can also use coconut oil. Um, and you cover the bottom of the pan with oil, heat it up, and um, you half a cup of popcorn kernels is best. And heat and cook them until they just slow down, not stop popping because then it's going to burn. It slows, the popping slows down dump it into a bowl. And honestly, it's so good. You don't even need to add butter. You could just put salt, but if you want to make it special, add butter or make it caramel corn and melt some butter, some brown sugar in the butter. It's amazing. And that, that feels really special. Mm -hmm. So good. <laughs> okay. I've got, I mean, um, I would say there's a book called The Yearling. If you um, want a coming of age novel that, that will embrace um, kind of the animal lover and the adventurer and the kid who's yearning for um, some freedom. That's one of our favorite family reads. We read a book called Sweep, which appealed to every person in our family, the adults, teenagers, and even the nine-year-old. It's a new release and it takes place in Victorian England. It's a great way to learn about like the lives of chimney sweeps and, and talk about kids who even now have to live in, in poverty and have to work in situations where they are experiencing really hard things that this wasn't something that happened long ago. But the book does a great job balancing some fantasy in there so it doesn't feel so heavy. Mm -hmm. That was a fantastic read. We enjoyed so much. Um, the Wing Feather Saga, I'll just say that one to end with. That's a great one because it's a series and it's so fun to read a book that's that's a series because then you're excited for the next segment. And that's a book that's full of adventure and drama and excitement and relationships. So those are three that were great for us. That's really great. I, I've been doing an Audible series with one of my sons and we, it, it wasn't even on purpose, but we were going somewhere in the car and we said, hey, let's, let's, let's start listening to a book. So we downloaded a Ted Decker book 
And Ted Decker has a lot of fiction. It's, it's Christian fiction, but it's, he's very creative and the way he weaves story is really masterful. And, um, and we started this one book and then my son got so into it. And then he was like forcing me to keep reading the series. So on audible. So, I mean, it really is interesting and he's, he's 18. And so it is interesting. We're not listening to it at the same time, but we're both listening to it. And then we talk about it. So it's like a common talking point. So even though we're not doing it at the same time, mainly because he's reading it and I'm listening to it because I'm doing it while I'm cleaning or whatever, you know, doing yard work. So um, I would recommend any of the Ted Decker series. The one specifically that we're doing right now is called Black. And it has the books are black, red, white, and green. Those are the four books in the series. All right. Well, out. let's, yeah. Well, let's talk about special moments. Let's talk about kind of creating the, the special times that we do want in the summer. And sometimes, you know, in years past, that would maybe mean that special vacation and maybe, or maybe not people can do that this year, but what are some ways that you all are wanting to, or planning to create those special moments? So Greta, we're going to work backwards this time and start with you. Okay, well, I, I talked about before having things to look forward to. And so we, we, we don't do a huge summer bucket list that tends to feel um, a little overwhelming to me. I, I love spontaneity and I ha love having things to look forward to, but not so much that I feel like, oh, we didn't need everything on the list. I'm a failure. <laughs> <laughs> so, but we do have, we did pick a few things that we really wanted to try this year. So one of them we're looking forward to doing in August. There is every year in August, there's a really big meteor shower. It's called the Perside Meteor Shower. And um, there's one in December as well, but the August one is much easier because it's not so cold when you're out at four in the morning looking for meteors. So my kids wanted to go camping during the meteor shower, somewhere where it's dark, um, where there's darker skies, living close to Los Angeles, we have to go <laughs> out of the city. And um, right now we don't know what will be open, but we're just, we're just sort of watching to see what campgrounds open up. But it's, it's August, the best days to see it are the uh, August 11th, 12th, and 13th. And you can, you can, you know, plan a camping trip or just wake yourself, your kids up at like 3 a.m. and make it like this, you know, kind of crazy excursion where you drive outside to a place, maybe half hour, hour away from home, wherever you live, where there's darkness and, and get outside the car, wrap up in some blankets and watch the sky just explode. We tried to do it um, earlier this year and I got my kids up 3 a.m. We drove an hour away and we got out and fog rolled in and we couldn't. Oh, no. But you Such know what? It didn't matter because they laughed. We thought it was fun. We stopped and got hot chocolate on the way home because Starbucks was open by 5 a.m. And it made a great memory regardless. So that's just one thing that is on our list that's going to be special, whether it works or not. Yeah, that's great. And I'm going to put that on my calendar in August to be watching. Or did you say the date? I don't think yes. you said the date. Uh, the 11th, 12th, and 13th of August. Those are 11th, 12th, 13th of August, 2020. Okay. I'm totally putting that on my calendar. Kristen, how about you? Well, I loved Greta that you just talked about, even if it's a flop, like the fail, <laughs> it was still like, it's a story that y'all have to laugh about. And so I think that again, like just keeping perspective that um, sometimes, you know, even sometimes things that I plan, my kids like don't think it's going to be very fun, but then it ends up being great. So um, yeah, us too, we kind of want to do a few um, adventures local, you know, a couple within a couple hours that we've lived in Oklahoma for 11 years, but we've never had the time to go discover some of these places. And um, so one is a salt plain state park and you can go dig for crystals. And the terrain is just totally different than anything in the state. And that's something that, like, why didn't I do that when my kids were young? I mean, right. I don't know. But I've seen families with teenagers going and having a blast. And then 
because the Tiger King Zoo is only like an hour from here, that's opened back up. And so my boys kind of want to go just to like say you've been there. Okay. It's going to be a major destination now, Kristen. I know. I know. Yeah. I was going to say, we might go there this summer. <laughs> well, you can come see me. That'd be that's great. Right. <laughs> yes. So we have a few excursions like that plan too, that I think will make for fun memories. But another thing, like our family is super competitive. So I had this idea of like making a summer Olympics because we don't have the Olympics this year. I think it's going to be next year instead. But, um, and then like maybe every week having a different tournament, like a ping pong tournament or whatever it is. Um, and just kind of keeping a running tally. Like we've been doing that with our board games, like keeping kind of score of who wins what. And, um, I mean, not for any other reason other than we just like bragging rights in our family. <laughs> no, it it's fun. Adds, it's it fun. Adds to the fun, you know. So, which thought, what games are you playing, Kristen? By the way, um, we played Risk. We um, Mexican Train Dominoes is a family favorite of my entire large family. Um, so we always play that. I mean, we've gone back to playing like childhood games. Like, sorry. I mean, mm -hmm. literally, I was like, let's make it a goal to play through every game that we have in our cabinet. Um, so, you know, just every week, a different game. So great. That's really fun. Okay. Well, I want to see pictures from the Tiger King <laughs> area. <laughs> All right, Alex, what do you think? Well, Special we're probably moments. not going to drive to Oklahoma though. We could to go to the Tiger King. Uh, yeah, we did watch the Tiger King I mentioned on an earlier episode. Um, but there is a place outside of Denver that has rescued a number of tigers from um, there. So anyway, uh, I just think this idea of finding places that you have always meant to go to, but haven't gone to. And on Mother's Day, we went to the downtown campus in the middle of Denver that holds the community college and Metro State, which is kind of the commuter school in Denver. We've never gone to hang out on that campus before. Well, someone had given me the tip that it's closed right now, so it's really empty, and it's this beautiful campus in the middle of the city. You literally look up and there are skyscrapers right above you, and they've preserved all these historic churches that were there because they were part of the old downtown and some homes. It was just a place we'd never been before and it is a 10 minute drive from our house. And so what are the other places around that are within a couple of hours um, of us that we can go, we don't have to stay overnight at a hotel. We don't have to camp if we don't want to. Colorado is notorious for now. It's really hard to go camping because so many people have moved here because they like to. So um, even in regular times when everything's open the last few years, it's been hard to get campsites. So we're anticipating this year it's going to be really hard because some places are going to be closed and everyone's ready to go. Like they've got their campers, you know, car key in the ignition, ready to pull out of the driveways out of Denver. So. We're just trying to think where are the places that other people may not be going that there's room for us to explore. And so that's where my mind is right now for those adventures and those memories. And we will have the ability to be spontaneous because we don't have a lot of long-term all summer commitments going. I mean, we don't even have swim lessons on our schedule because we can't. So um, the ability to be spontaneous, I want to take advantage of that. Yeah, it's great. I really think as we look at this idea of creating special moments, um, one of the things that's really a blessing about teenagers is different from younger kids is they, though they may not say they embrace challenges um, necessarily, but when they do something that they perceive as hard, they, that's how confidence is built. They're really proud of it. And challenging teenagers to do things that's like, one inch beyond their, what they think they can do is a really great memory to be made because then they remember it because it was special. So I was even thinking, Alex, like in your area, you have so many 14ers, like my, that would be so awesome for my boys to go climb like three 14ers, you know, or something like just doing something that they perceive as hard 
but then you do it all together. And then it'd be maybe really hard for you. Cause like in my case, my teenagers are in better shape than me at this point, but I think physical challenges actually create memories. Um, one time my husband and my son, they did this huge canoe trip and it was like 28 miles of canoeing but it created a really incredible memory. Now, all of this stuff can be like a little bit of work and th thought on our part, but I think about this whole idea of intentionality. Like how can we be really thinking intentionally and creating these moments that don't cost a lot of money, but that really do matter and make a memory. And usually that means we have to do something out of the ordinary because um, even research has shown that new experiences is what creates that like in really solid bonding. And so how can we create these new experiences and especially with our teenagers that can do hard things? How can we think about and think through a little bit how we can create some of those? And maybe that's a backpacking trip. I mean, I really, and that's, you know, part of Alex, what you were talking about too, with overcrowded areas, what my husband and I have found that as soon as you get on a backpacking trail, you just have weeded out 75% of people because most people aren't willing to actually put on their pack and carry their tent. And so maybe this year you want to try backpacking because you're actually going to find places to stay because nobody's out there. And it really is true. So, um, you know, thinking about even just physical challenges with teens, I think can make really special memories. Okay, let's talk food because we all know we are really having to navigate the food thing in our homes with teenagers. So Kristen, talk about that because you've got boys as well, like I do. Yes, and um, so we decided during quarantine that they were going to each get a night that they got to prepare food and that was a huge help to me, but it was also, and I'll back up a minute, something I learned after I sent my daughter to college is that there was things that I did not prepare her well enough to do on her own. And so with my boys, I want to make sure that they're learning how to, you know, do things in the kitchen. And so this is great. Do their own laundry. Um, but so my boys, one of them made calzones one night and I have never seen him so proud. I mean, he was just like watching us as we took our first bite. Just Aww, see, you know, how much that's impressive. That's high level. It's, it was a pioneer woman recipe. It really, it wasn't that difficult, but like in his mind it was because yeah. I mean, the extent of his cooking is omelets and macaroni and cheese, you know? <laughs> so it was, it was a big deal. But then like, you're talking about kind of scaffolding, like once he knew he could do that, well, then he was willing to try something else. So, I mean, I'm like, boys, I want you to get on Pinterest or open up my cookbooks and find something that you think sounds good and you take charge. Um, so that's been real helpful, even in, because y'all know it gets exhausting thinking about even making a grocery list. So that's been great. And I will tell you something else. We have an air fryer. I don't know if y'all have an air fryer. Yes, I am a total convert, air fryer oh convert right here. It is so great mm -hmm. because they can stick all sorts of things in it and cook up food real quick and, and they eat vegetables real well that way. So that's been that just stays out on my counter now. There's just no point in even. I know me too. Okay. Greta, Alex, have you, have you converted to the air fryer yet? No, but I'm willing to at this point, get any gadget that will help me <laughs> feed people. <laughs> okay. I'm telling you, it is the best. You literally put in a frozen chicken breast, you sprinkle a few spices on it and in 12 minutes it's done. Wait, it's like so the it's Instapot, better than in the instant pot. It's like, I think it's better than the Instapot. I think it's easier, Kristen. Do you? I agree. And it just adds that, like, I don't know, the crisp. The crust. It, yeah, it's good. It basically fries it, so to yeah. speak. It doesn't really fry it. but Well, that's it, like, what the gives, title implies. Yeah, it gives, like, that finish on the food a little bit that the Instapot for sure doesn't give. Yeah. Okay, Kristen, what are your favorite air fryer things? Like, what? give me your go-tos for, like, oh, how yeah. you prepare something. Well, I mean, my boys put just about any, you know, we go to Sam's a lot and buy, they just stick anything to warm it back up. But, um, ah, chicken for sure. I put in like now, instead of doing like my vegetables in the oven, roasted potatoes or green beans or broccoli. I mean, I almost always just stick them in there. So I'm using it a lot for vegetables. Um, I'm trying to think what other meats I've done in there. Chicken is kind of the main one, but I feel like yeah. we use it just a lot just to to Chris even like to heat up a day old pizza. Instead yeah. of the microwave. So it's not yeah. soggy. Exactly. 
We do a lot of salmon in it, Kristen, just Ooh, FYI. Be- Literally, I just do the salmon with some lemon, salt and pepper, maybe a little of like the um, Trader Joe's, not everything but the bagel seasoning, and it's great. That sounds good. Like mm-hmm. chicken wings, that's another one, but you know, again, that's chicken. Yeah. Okay, Greta, how about you? Food, talk to us. Um, well, I don't have an air fryer. I have a tiny kitchen <laughs> with room for very little extra appliances, but you guys are um, you guys are just trying to sell me on it. It's not uh-huh. good. Um, for me, like I, I don't like the, the trying to meal plan and come up with something new every week. Um, so what I do is like we have just a few nights during the week that these are the nights we count on, like Taco Tuesday. Friday burger night, uh, homemade pizza. Usually that happens Saturday or Sunday. And, and for me, just knowing like those are on the calendar. I know what I know what's happening those days. I don't have to plan. Think of something new really helps me. And my kids like it too. They give them something to look forward to because even though it's the same, what we have done to make it more exciting is so for example we are trying to craft the best burger so they all get to um, create like different toppings like a special sauce or recreate our favorite in and out burger which is you know the favorite hamburger of southern california um what about if we make grilled onions and and they're they get to be in charge of those things so they're helping with the meal they get to have the pride of oh i made the best burger what if we switch out the buns what if we try this brioche bun or whatever so um it it makes like there's continuity for me and and um yet there is something new we can try different meats for taco tuesday so sometimes we might do shredded um beef that i cooked in the crock pot sometimes we grill um carne asada on the grill whatever it is but it's just it's just a relief not to have to think of something for That's seven. i like that idea that you have like the general meal but then you actually switch it up within the meal that's fun yeah and you know i mean this this might sound kind of weird but i love the idea of parenting um with like for the long haul. So I love to think like that my kids will um, go off to college and they'll like want to invite their friends home for Friday burger night. Like, oh, we always have burgers on Friday night. Come home with me. Or when they're adults and they bring their kids home, like come home for, you know, it's Taco Tuesday. I love mom's beans or whatever it is. So it's kind of like creating an anchor and, and it's makes life easier for me, but I also feel like creating those anchor points for our kids, even with something as simple as a meal, it, it helps for um, making something that has to happen <laughs> into, uh, into a memory and into something special. That's awesome. I'm like, I'm like totally fist bumping you. I, I totally agree with that. Alex, do you have anything to add on the food category? Just that I forget to ask my kids what they want. Mm -hmm. And I go to Costco and I buy a hundred of something. And then I come (laughs) home and realize nobody actually likes this. I bought it before. Yes. That's what I have. That's the memory I have when I'm at Costco is, oh, I've bought this before. Uh, But what I forgot is that nobody ate it or they ate three Uh of that particular granola bar. Anyway, my kids want to eat well. They want to eat in a healthy way. And I forget to ask them before I go to the store or before I place my online order. It actually is kind of easier right now because I'm sitting there ordering to say, what would you guys like for snacks? And they know I mean healthy. And they tell me what kind of fruit they want or what kind of vegetables they want. And they tell me they're sick of potatoes or whatever. So that helps me to just bring home food that will actually get consumed. It's interesting. My kids and I have been having those conversations because they'll say, I'll say, okay, I'm going to Costco today. Text me what, and I say, text me what you want. Cause then it's mm-hmm. like my little list, but then like, they'll say granola bars, but then mm-hmm. like the last time I came home and they're like, not those kind. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, listen, people, you said granola bars. I gave you every opportunity to tell me exactly what you wanted, but it's that whole thing of get specific because mm-hmm. you know, you do want, you want to be a good steward and you want them to eat what you bring home. So I like that. Right. That's Otherwise cool. I'm eating 90 of that granola bar <laughs> that I don't really like either, but I'm not going to waste yeah. it. Yeah. And that's the burden of being the mom. Oh my gosh. So true. 
Okay. Let's end today with the best parenting hacks for teens. And I want to hear from every one of you. So Alex, start us off. The last three months, I feel like my go-to word has been no, right? Because no, 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 no. You can't do that. This is canceled. And I'm the bearer of the bad news over and over. And I'm darn tired of it. And that's where some of my (laughs) meltdowns have happened is I have told my kids, you know, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. So why are you asking me? So my new go-to, my switch it into positive is telling my older girls, ask me something I can say yes to. That's good. Because then they are calculating, okay, I know I can do this. I know I can't, I can't do that. So I'm going to present it in a way with the parameters that she's going to be able to be okay with. This is usually about seeing somebody or having contact with the outside world. Mm -hmm. Um, Something that I can say yes to. So they know what the parameters are and maybe, you know, things are changing daily, weekly around what's okay, what's not. So sometimes they, we need to adjust. And then what you, what I'll say yes to is going to be bigger and broader, but they know. So I'm asking them to frame it in a way that allows me to say yes. That's really good. That's a really good little flip of the script. I like it. Okay. Greta, how about you? Um, well, for teens, especially, I just love the idea of creating space. I can't remember somebody who mentioned that before. I think it was you, Kristen, talking about like the fire pit and creating space for connections to happen. And so for me, I love the idea of creating space in our routine for connections. And even if we're at home, it can be easy to forget that um, we need to do that. And so uh, it might be as something as simple as, you know, walking the dog together every night, like that's their chore, but you go along for it. And, um, or it might be you take them out Wednesday morning for donuts or coffee, or um, they love rock climbing or roller skating. So you join them in that, but, but having like a dedicated time where you spend time together. And the purpose of the time is to create connection and to create a space for important conversations to happen, for there to be um, just building relationship. But they don't even need to know that that's your purpose because you don't want to create this um, mantle of heaviness and expectation of, oh, this is where we're going to have an important talk. Um, Instead, it's just, hey, we're hanging out together. But Mm -hmm. because you have created the continuity and the familiarity of that routine, it feels safe and it feels comfortable. And that's when the relationship blossoms. So I think it's easy to do when our kids are younger because their schedules are more open and they want to be with us. And as our kids get older, they're busier, we're busier. And it's easy to, to buy into the script that says, Oh, our, our older kids want to drift away from us. But I just don't think that that's true. They want to be with us. We just have to create the space for it. And so for me, that's been something that I've been really intentional my husband as well to create that with our kids individually and then as a whole for all of us to be together intentionally as well. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. I was was actually smiling as you were saying that like teenagers run, if they think that you're trying to create some intentional, like, you know, like talking moment, they're like, Ooh, out of here. Right. Okay. Kristen, (laughs) best hacks. (laughs) I agree. But, um, just piggybacking off what you're saying, Greta, I I'd agree that we have to be willing to enter their world and just have that time so that those conversations can naturally happen without mm-hmm. it being, you know, like, let's sit down and talk about this. But so like, I don't like to fish, but my son does. So just that willingness to go with him fishing, because then we're just standing there and And honestly, I think it's pretty boring, but that's (laughs) where the opportunity comes up that we just get to talk and we're in his car and we're driving on the back country roads to get to the pond. And, and so it's just, it creates that opportunity where then we have that unstructured time for conversation. Um, But I think another thing is um, just a, a, a hack with teenagers is creating the event. And so, I mean, in a time when it's not social distancing, we might say, I'll order a pizza and you invite 
kids over to swim. But I think even with social distancing, we can still do it. In fact, um, one of my daughter's friends is getting married on Saturday night. Of course, now it's only family. Um, but the other night at their home in their backyard, they had a prayer and worship time to pray over this bride and groom. And it was the sweetest thing. There was someone playing guitar and we all brought our own, you know, outdoor seats spread out. Um, we listened to the music and then the father pray prayed. And so I thought, you know, with teenagers, you could do the same type thing. You could have, you know, if someone plays a guitar or something similar, you know, and just gather like in a park, even if it's just a talk, even if it's not, you know, a performer, but I mean, like our small group did that at church. We met at a park with our outdoor seats. So I think we can still initiate to tell our teens like, oh, I'm going to set out, have your friends bring their chairs and, mm -hmm. and that way. And, but this is the catch too. You have to stay there. Like, I think so often we scatter as soon as the kids come over, but I think it's so awesome and important to be a part of these conversations with the kids so that we get into their world. And then we have kind of inside information to speak into our kids' lives because we have been privy to conversations with them and their friends. It's really, it's, it's, I love that. And I, I was just thinking how, you know, games like um, Capture the Flag or Ultimate Frisbee, or we play Frisbee golf a lot. We actually ordered a long time ago those just Frisbee golf holes. But um you know, just even doing that with their friends, then you're kind of naturally doing something with them. So it's not like, oh, my parents are just hanging out here next to, you know, but like you're actually doing something and making a memory with all of the people and it's outside and like Frisbee golf, we've been doing that social distancing because you can. So, you know, it's just a fun way to stay connected. Okay. Um, I'm going to add that, um, I'm going to once again, give a shout out to charts, just posting things on the wall takes the tension out with teenagers. And so like, like a dish schedule, it's just a really good hack. I'm going to say it again, cause it's, it really works with teenagers. You just post it and somehow that posting makes it official. Um, another thing is, um, paying them to do things you really don't want to do. And like for me right now, that's photo organization. I really don't want to organize my thousands of photos. And so, you know, tasks that you really don't want to do, chances are they're going to be excited for you to pay them for that. So that would be another hack. Um, and then my, my last one is like helping them think like entrepreneurs. And so, you know, kind of like getting back to some of the things we've talked about, but you know, what are, what are some creative ways that they can actually learn a little bit of an entrepreneurial mindset during this time where they may have to think more creatively and then ultimately that's going to benefit them long-term. And so what are, you know, even are there some tests out there we can be helping our kids take? Like, for example, you can take, um, well, Enneagram, Myers-Briggs, like the Enneagraminstitute.com, um, the Myers-Briggs temperament sorter. I mean, all of those are so good. StrengthsFinder, um, strengthsfinder.org. Those all will help your kids to identify their strengths. And then it also breaks things down. Like here's some possible jobs that'd be really good for this certain type. And then you could even help them start brainstorming. Okay. That obviously looks like when you're an adult, what might that look like now as a teenager and really helping them kind of think creatively based on their strengths and talents and how God made them. So I think that's another, another good way to use our time right now. All right. Any last comments to parents of teenagers? Let's just give what, let's just give a little like 30 second um, last comment from each person. So, uh, Kristen, why don't you start? Um, well, I mean, just thinking about missing the stuff and I'll just go back to something I said earlier on about like, I want this to be a summer that they really look back and remember. And so I think we're at a perfect time right now at the beginning to be intentional, to think through, like, what is it that we are going to do as a family that will really unify us together and cause them to crave more family time, sibling time, so that that means more to them. And I think also um, just an emphasis on building character and um, pouring into their hearts at a time when it's less busy. So it's really a very awesome opportunity that can go with us way beyond this 
summer in this crazy season. Mm -hmm. So great. Greta, how about you? Well, I love the idea of helping our kids learn that, that misadventure or thing schedules and plans gone awry don't have to um, mean the end of the world that we grow in, um, adversity. And we always say as a family, one of our mantras is it will make a great story later. And yeah. so we, we kind of try to take the hard times and say, well, what story can, can we make out of this that we can look back on? And so if you take that as your posture with your kids who are teens and old enough to understand that, like, what story are we writing this summer? And um, is it going to be a great story later? Let's make it one. Yeah. It's a good word. Okay, Alex. This is a stressful time for parents based on different circumstances, financial, work, kids, health. You could be concerned about your own parents. So as parents, we can be really grumpy right now for good <laughs> reason, right? I don't want to take away, like, totally. you, you can be legit stressed right now. And we're not going to get this summer back as we said. So let's have some fun with our kids. And it may mean mentally at five o'clock saying, okay, my stress part of the day is I'm just going to put it over here until tomorrow. That stress will still be there for me tomorrow. It'll mm -hmm. still be waiting. And so maybe it's not the evening, maybe it's the morning, maybe it's the afternoon when you go on the bike ride or walk the dog, as Greta said, but have some ways to separate your stress, and I'm speaking out of my own mishaps here, to be able to separate your stress so that you can enjoy your kids. Because when we're talking about teenagers, they're not going to be home forever. And that's the goal. We want to launch them well. And part of launching them well is enjoying them and having yeah. fun with them. So good. Oh my gosh. I could talk to you three forever, honestly, about this. I love all of your perspectives so much. Thank you for sharing today. Greta, you've got a new book out. Tell us the title. Well, it's called Adventuring Together, Creating Lasting Memories and Heart Connections with Your Kids. And um, this conversation just encapsulates so much of what the book is about. It comes out in July, July 14th. It's such good timing. <laughs> it's a really good timing. I love it. All right, everyone. Well, thank you again for all of your wisdom and happy summer, everybody.